Welcome to a celebration of creativity, resilience, and the ability of art to heal and inspire. This virtual experience promises to be a convergence of hearts and minds, uniting us across geographical distances to appreciate the universal language of art. Together, let us explore, connect, and be inspired. Welcome to a night that transcends boundaries, connects souls, and celebrates the remarkable journey from trauma to beauty through the eyes of art. You're watching Petal Reverie, From Trauma to Beauty, a solo exhibition and artist talk on JD Hendustries. collage artist known for creating vivid and let's meet the featured artist rashad ali muhammad is a multidisciplinary collage artist known for creating vivid and captivating works reflecting the vast complexities of our human existence with a formal graphic design and photography education muhammad blends his acquired skills to create art that fascinates and expands the mind his love for innovation and continued experimentation fuels his whimsical and enchanting artistic sensibilities. He works primarily in mixed media analog and digital collage. For him, collage combines intention, investigation, and invention, dissecting established references and reassembling them to create new compelling visions. The limitless opportunity to incorporate unconventional elements fulfills his passion for exploration and continued learning. Muhammad's ongoing journey to expand his emotional intelligence ignited his desire to explore the intricacies of the human experience, the expansive intersections that shape our lives, and how we can relate to each other beyond the surface. His experiences as a queer, gender non-conforming person of the African diaspora reflect his fondness for utilizing art as a catalyst to liberate minds from the binary confines of society. Through his art, he cultivates open space for healing and rejuvenation from our chaotic world, where individuals can explore their authenticity through self-love, vulnerability, and connection. Muhammad is a resident artist at the Torpedo Factory Art Center in Alexandria, Virginia. His art has been exhibited extensively throughout the Washington metropolitan area, D.C., Maryland, Virginia, with various national and international exposure. Notable solo shows include the Strathmore, Maryland, Anacostia Arts Center, D.C., and the Art League, Virginia. His artwork has appeared broadly in print and digital media, including The Washington Post, Collage Magazine, and British GQ. We're just moments away from our artist talk with Rashad Ali Muhammad, live at the historic Torpedo Factory Arts Center in Alexandria, Virginia on JD Hendustries. This is Petal Reverie, From Trauma to Beauty, a solo art exhibition. We'll be right back.
live at the historic Torpedo Factory Arts Center in Alexandria, Virginia on JD Hendustries. Everyone, this is Pedal Reverie, from trauma to beauty, a solo art exhibition. We hope you enjoy. It is show featuring functional ceramics, glass, wood, and metal works for the table. Many of the works are from our Art League schools faculty and student body, as well as from participants in our impart program for uh, injured veterans and first responders. And third, of course, is our starring solo show artist, Rashad Ali Muhammad. Rashad is a multi, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. No. Now you're just Rashad. <laughs> Uh, a multidisciplinary artist working in assemblage, design, painting, and video. In addition to his work here, you can find him in local spots in the area around DC, uh, including Brentwood Arts Exchange and Honfleur Gallery. Welcome. Thank you, <laughs> thank you. Can I just hold it? Yeah, you, you want to grab it? And Might as well. <laughs> <clears throat> thank you for being here. Yes, thank you for having me. How long have you been a Since like 2018, something like that. So yeah, some years. Yes. Um, where are you from? Clinton, Maryland. Born and raised. Well, born in Alexandria and raised in Clinton. So. Are you still there? Yes and no. I'm between okay. Clinton and Alexandria. My partner's in Alexandria. My parents are in Clinton. So I... I'm all over. Yes, and speaking of all over, you are presently a resident artist at the Torpedo Factory. Yes, come to 222, right upstairs. Behind the yellow door. Behind <laughs> the yellow door, yes. Um, and when you were younger, what was the first thing that you made that you were proud of as an artist? <laughs> made, well, first of all, Created. my mom will tell you, I was drawing on the walls all the time, so that's the first. <laughs> that's the first art I was creating. But I guess the first uh, specific thing was probably like a poster for her government contract. They were doing the Earth Day. I think I did like a poster design for that. Okay. And when when did you feel like you knew you were an artist? Hmm. Uh, not until like college, until or no high school. Um, my art teacher, he was very. I guess he saw something within me, and he was like kind of just gave me things to do. Uh, he just gave me a camera and told me to go figure it out. I said, okay. <laughs> I did, and it was fun. So then I, I did, I do photography. There's actually a piece in the group exhibition here. Um, and then I did film, and then he taught me a lot of different things. So high school is when art was like a, I can do this. I have natural ability at it, so. And when you study, what, where did you study art further? So I didn't study art. I went to mm -hmm. American University. I have a graphic design degree. Um, but I took like art classes while I was there. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't. I didn't take any specific art classes. Or I read that you began in film, studying film. Yes. So, uh, so <laughs> you know, um, Americans' film program was geared towards documentary style. Um, I was super focused on like advertising and music videos. Um, so like, I was not that interested. So I was kind of like. I uh, took one intro to design class and it was like, for me that was uh, combining the artistic side and like the analytical and kind of business side of like communication. So that was like the perfect marriage for me. So especially in not being a starving artist, like I can do this <laughs> as a main career and then I can still do art elsewhere, so. And you, you still do, you are still a designer? Yes, I still work full time. Um, a lot of people don't realize that. Um, I juggle a lot, um, but it's, uh, I feel like I've created a holistic life in terms of I get to create all the time. Um, and for me, like design is like just a stone throw away from doing art. So I can, each one feeds into each other. So it's kind of, it's not as daunting to do a full-time job and do art. So it's just uh, flexing different muscles that are still related to the same body system, we'll say that. Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, how do you navigate the business of art? Ooh, yes, the business. <laughs> oh, that's a very lovely question. Um, so it's actually something I talk about when I talk to other artists. Um, 
a lot of artists don't really focus on the business aspect and the business is like 50% you have to really do create and cultivate a business mind. Um, the business side is a lot. It needs understanding the industry, understanding. Um, you mean it's not easy? Absolutely not, <laughs> absolutely not. Um, it can be very draining, but fulfilling once you figure it out and kind of get your foot going. Um, like for me, I think one of the bigger things that a lot of artists don't and networking, and uh, I feel like a lot of people feel when they hear networking, like, oh, it's like draining your body, of like, meh. Um, but I've, what I've done is more so focus on building connections and having, um, enjoying each other, and, uh, hey y'all, sorry. Um, so, in understanding that, it's not so much just about what you can get from and really seeing what their interests are, maybe you can connect them with somebody else, and just, more so being of service and understanding that what you might, you know, just a conversation today and really helping someone out here. over there, over hiding at the door. I'm a curator in DC. I met her doing something and she needed help with a design. And I was like, I can easily do it in like 30 minutes. And she needed help. I was like, okay, let me just do this. And I did a show for her and, you know, just from there, the connections keep connecting and you figure out things and you get more opportunities the more you put yourself out there, the more you really help other people. How do you describe your artistry or the type of art? How do you describe the art that you create now? Ooh. Um, <laughs> so I am primarily a collage, um, analog and digital and digital like motion and video as well. But I'm always exploring and always experimenting Today is not what I might be doing tomorrow, so get it while you can. <laughs> Buy the pieces while you can. Um, but I will say specifically, this style has been very lucrative for me. Um, it started during COVID. Okay, well, am I jumping ahead? No, no, okay. please. Um, it started during COVID, and then I was doing portrait collages, and I did an exhibition at the Strathmore doing um, the portrait collages, and then I was just experimenting and trying to do abstract styles and so part of the business side of art and understanding is researching and really understanding who's buying what, like are galleries buying this, what, what's in commercial spaces. I was really super hyper-focused hyper on being in commercial spaces and so I was really understanding or researching and trying to understand what they're buying and so they buy primarily abstract. So I was like I need to develop an abstract style. Um, and so after I developed this style and I think it was like the end of 2021, um, I had a solo exhibition at the Public Playhouse in PG County. Um, like this piece back here, the orange piece on the wall, that's from that first collection. And so it started as me doing like kind of a color theory uh, experiment and seeing just, they were all 30 by 40 canvases, about 10, and they were all just monochromatic pieces. And so um, from there, just again, networking. Luckily, it was my mom is in a network of very well-to-do women, business women. So one of them saw one of the pieces, and she um, commissioned me to do a large piece for Kaiser Permanente in Shady Grove. So it's similar to this green piece right here. It's like imagine this this wall a little bit longer and four large pieces. So, and then from there, the same woman asked me to do another commission for a private office space in DC and then the business of uh, art and like exhibiting your work and putting yourself out there my work this little blue piece over here is a uh, sea dreams it was at the Martha Spade gallery at the, the war piece or the, the circle circular? piece oh sorry yeah the circle piece with the fringe um, it was at the Martha Spade gallery in at the wharf and a architecture firm happened to see the piece and they contacted me to do a commission for their new building in Southwest so just signed the contract, so I'm like, yeah. Congratulations. Wait, thank you. Wait for the deposit. But yeah, I'm glad that happened. And then um, a law firm, just being here in the building, um, they saw my studio and they saw some of the pieces. They contacted me to do a proposal, so I'm still, I have to work that out. But um, it's been, this style specifically has been my bread and butter as of late. <laughs> so it's probably been one of the things I will continue to do, although I'll still continue to explore and do other 
other things. Now, I remember when you were first exhibiting in the Art League and you had uh, a lot of portraiture with collage elements, and I remember that there were a few petals mm -hmm. then, mm -hmm. and now there are many, many petals. <laughs> how, can you tell us a little bit about how uh, you came to use um, the artificial flowers in yeah. your work? So, excuse me. So when I started in doing collaging, so collaging I started during the quarantine. Um, to paint primarily, and then I switched to uh, painting for me is a little more finicky and a little more, I'm gonna say patience, it's a different type of patience because clearly I have patience to do these, but I stopped and switched primarily to collaging, and then I'm very interested in environment, the environment and like recycling, so, during the quarantine, like around the house, I was like gathering greeting cards and uh, old wrapping paper, just kind of seeing what I can do with that. And so, as I started researching more on collaging, collaging technically is paper only, so assemblage, I guess you kind of consider this actually assemblage, but I feel like people, it's easier to understand what collaging is, so mm -hmm. let's go with that. Um, <laughs> but, so when I was doing that, I wanted to do something really distinct really different that I've never seen anyone else doing. So when I was at, like Michael's, um, I was walking around looking for different um, mediums to use. Arrangement section, and it was like just the colors, the shapes, the patterns, all the things. I was like, I could do so much with this. So um, in my previous paintings, like my thing was gold leaf. I would use gold leaf for the hair. So. I guess kind of transitioning, I started using the petals for hair and seeing how like petals kind of look like feathers. They kind of look like playing around with that. And then um, that's when this, this mm -hmm. blew up into more, yeah. And this was, uh, this was, you developed this during the quarantine period? Yeah. Uh, do you want to talk about what that time was like for you as an artist? Ooh, interesting, yes. Um, COVID was pandemic, so okay, to be very clear, the trauma to beauty part of the title, so actually my parents were like, we didn't give you any trauma, like where's the trauma coming from? We had a great child, what happened? Like, I remember some days I just didn't want to get up and do anything. I was just very, you know, depressed, in and out of it, a little agoraphobic, I didn't want to leave the house anymore. Um, gained a lot of weight, I was like, ooh, I don't want anybody to see me. So I was like, mm, you know, gotta figure that out. So. It was using the petals as, well, as creating art, art is therapy. Oh, thank you. So much better. Thank you, Jean. Um, I was going, so I had, a, I was going to a therapist at the time, like really, I was trying to explore my, in the, in the combination of art and how art can be therapy, therapeutic, is this, it came to this because it was like doing one piece at a time. One. and cut them up one by one. Sometimes my parents help and they get paid, so you know, <laughs> they like to give people money. Um, but then assembling them and just doing it one piece at a time, it kind of takes you out of everything that's going on and kind of you get to, get to process emotions, feelings, uh, experiences, all the things. And so it's kind of like a I'm doing it specifically for like a commission or doing, I was cranking some of these pieces out. Like the last few months, I was like kind of, I gotta get things done. So I was kind of doing a lot, but over art overall, it's very just calming and therapeutic, just focusing on one thing at a time. So, yeah. All right, thank you. Um, do you want to talk uh, a little bit more well, we've covered the trauma. Yes. <laughs> um, about, and, and the petals. Do you want to talk about the idea of reverie in yeah. the work? So, if you don't know what reverie is, I didn't know what it is until I saw the word. Um, it's basically like taking your mind out of anything. And so, I thought of when I was thinking of the title of the exhibition, um, I thought of even just this display on the wall, doing these circles kind of disparate on the wall. I wanted to feel like a, you can think of it as a solar system, you can think of it as like your mind space of like kind of compartmentalizing different thoughts. Or Part of my focus in this work is not, is kind of using natural, um, naturally occurring patterns. And so how, and that how 
its naturally occurring patterns are calming to the human mind and the human psyche. So I was like, I wanted to use monochromatic pieces. The sun or like a field of flowers and just going and frolicking in them. But then as I started exploring more and playing with contrast and I met this woman after a show, um, she was colorblind and she saw one of the pieces and she mentioned she really enjoyed it compared to the other art because she could see the contrast because of the depth. Contrast, and th as, I, as I grew the, uh, through, grew the collection, I wanted to play more with the contrast and really thinking about how people see color and how they play with each other, how they live together. So um, I, I prefer monochromatic because it's just, it's fun to limit yourself and then see what you can do with it. But Fantastic to have different shades and seeing the contrast and how they play with each other. So, yeah. And what do you what do you hope that um, an audience or a viewer would take away from your show? So it's funny you say that. So because I'm an artist here and having the public studios, it's very fascinating to watch people take in the work. So one of the things I've noticed is this childlike wonder that people have. Um, not so seeing children go at it is very they're very open and very free. But then you get to adults and it's like this metered response. Ooh, like wow. So it's like I want I want to I want people to leave with the sense of um, joy and excitement and rejuvenation. Also rethinking about what art can be. Um, it's not just painting, it's not just drawing, it's not just um, I guess the regular ways you think of art, art can really become, it can be semi-naturally, so of course, you know, there's a little, <laughs> that maybe got a little trained a little bit, but um, yeah, just thinking beyond what, I'm an out-of-the-box thinker, and <laughs> clearly that we're here, um, so I, w I would love people to leave with that as well. I don't, I don't know how well this weaves in, but tell me, uh, I, I read in another interview that you did that you were traveling mm -hmm. in Africa, in Ghana, mm -hmm. and Ghana, Benin. Togo, Benin. Yeah. And um, how did that influence your work? Do you think that that made a change for you? Yeah, absolutely. So, <sighs> Ariana. Okay. Um, so <laughs> when I went to Ghana, uh, when I went to Africa, West Africa. Um, so this is when I was still painting, and so when I went to Africa, I. There was a specific uh, experience we had where we went to the slave dungeons in Ghana. And being in the space was haunting in a good way. Um, like you could feel the ancestors, I could feel them like talking to me, I could hear them in my voice. I was like killed over on the wall trying to take it all in. Um, but what I took from that was like the resilience of our people. Um, and the strength that's within us, and just like, we came from this, we're here now today, so like, honestly, it left me with the idea that, honestly, anything that I wanna do, I can do, because we've got to where we are here now, um, but then also within the art, just being an African in general, was really seeing the color of the life that's there, of the people that are there, you know, in the media, they try to say it's very third world, this, that, the third, when you're there, it's absolutely not, you know, they, it's a different lifestyle. You know, they build their homes differently, so it might look like they're like lower income or lower rent. There actually is actually going on in the actual community. Um, so it's like this really vibrant life that you see, and people are just. 
also being Being in people that are actually happy. (laughs) Yes, you know, just like, and I'll say it's, you know, American, very materialistic and kind of like more. The less you have, you kind of help yourself kind of focus on what you do have and what's the good things that are going on. Um, But then also, I forgot what I was saying. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) ADHD, I'm sorry. Um, But yeah, what's, what's up there? What the community was like, that it seems like it's vibrant so, it's and happy, there. Yes. And, like comfortable. Oh, there we go. Thank you. So, um, so being like just being an African American there, it's like the calmness of not having to worry about your safety is like life changing. So, it's like coming back here was like jarring. Like just being in the space is like I like you want to yell at people like I. But you know you, like you, you remind yourself we have to do different things differently here. But then also, you know, I was at a panel discussion in Africa and they were talking about moving back to Africa and, you know, what it's like to come back. Interestingly, a lot of them were women talking about it and a lot of them were straight women. Um, and so I told them, like, being a queer man going back to Africa and, like, even if I desire to move back there, it's the privilege that I have here of being queer and open and out loud and proud. So it's like, but the reality of it is, yeah. I'm not as safe as I would be here. Although being a black man here, I'm not as safe as I would be there. So it's like, you know, yeah. where you're gonna be, you just gotta I'm here for now and we'll see where we end up. <laughs> um, now, what is next for you? Ooh, ooh, <laughs> next, oh, so much. Um, can I can I ask specifically? Oh, yeah, sure. I, I saw that you mentioned that you were conti- you were you are all, all you are already making clothes, and that you might be <laughs> very nice. Thank you. You might be working on a line. So the might be is very might. Okay. It's very you know it's very it's in flux. You're in R and D. Yes, very, <laughs> very much that. Yes, very R and D. Because um, I'll say this, I don't want to do custom. Annoying for me, especially like I, artists don't necessarily do math, or at least this artist does not necessarily like to do math. I can figure it out, but I really don't want to do it. Um, so, like, I would love to be able to find a seamstress to be able to just like I can give them the tech kit or whatever, I can figure it out, and then they can do all the work, and then I just have my brand. That would be fantastic. That's the goal. Okay. So, that's why, like, it's like you said, art. And what, what kind of work are you going to have at the uh, art market in October? It's super fine? Super fine, yeah, and so super fine art fair. Is that in uh, like in the um, Eastern Market area? Union Market. Union Market. Yeah, yeah, they're doing Union Market. Um, I don't know what I'll have there yet. It might okay. be whatever doesn't sell here, might just <laughs> be there. Um, and then some other pieces, trying to give a little balance of probably the portrait collages and the abstract collages, and then I might show some of my video work if I can, but that's a whole other figure. You have to figure out a whole way to do that. Like, yeah, can you like, tell us a little bit about the video work that you've got at the Brentwood Art? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, um, some of you people know I do video as well. Um, it started during like the, uh, when the NFTs were like a big buzzword. Yeah. I went to explore. Um, and I am a, because I'm a graphic designer, I can do bit, uh, digital work. I just never really understood how to sell it, so I kind of was like, I just will focus on physical art. Um, but the video at Brentwood currently is called Infinite Hill of Nature, and so I had a NFT residency in 2022, and so my focus was like the environment and healing. So I took photos from, like, uh, took photos of the sun, water, trees, flowers, um, people, silhouettes, and then turn to it like a kaleidoscopic effect. And so, um, funny, the director at the gallery mentioned that a lot of the students, they had a lot of summer camps there, so like saying a lot of the kids would stand in front of the video and pretend that they were the person in the thing. I was like, oh, okay, it's a little interactive now, so I can do that too. I say I do interactive art, um, but yeah. Thank you. Um, and do you have do you have any other shows that you'd like to mention? I got a lot of shows. Yeah. Um, next week at Hanfler Gallery in uh, Anacostia is the skateboard, leave it on the board um, exhibition. It's like a competition. So I did a triptych. It was inspired by the Powerpuff Girls trying to think of like strong women skateboarding. Um, so 
hopefully I win. Thousand dollars. You like money? And um, there's that one. There's the movement exhibition at the Yards that Gia over here curated. That's currently on display. Um, there's another one at Hera Hub that's coming up in somewhere in DC. It's about floor art. So some of the I'm doing a duo exhibition at home DC in December. And then my art is on the cover of the Academic Medicine in September. Something else, something else, something else. So, yeah. <laughs> well, would you like to share what your like social media oh, and yeah. your website? Ram Creates. So Ram, because that's my initials. People call me Ram, it's Rashad Lee Muhammad, but Ram Creates and uh Ramcreates.com, Ram Creates anything. <laughs> Just go on and figure it out and I'm there. And uh, I'd like to open it up now to the audience okay. if anyone has questions. I, I just want to ask, do, do you have some sort of um, your art displayed in another country? Or is it just here in America? So my art, <laughs> Mom, that's weird. <laughs> has been displayed in internationally. Um, I have had some video work in London. I've had an exhibition for an exhibition in Ireland. They actually asked me to do it again, so they, that's up. Oh, wow, I think it's up early too, so. Um, thank you for the reminder. <laughs> um, but yeah, so. I'm Anyone else have any questions for Rashad? Come on, Rain. AI is trash. No. Um, I don't, I, I'm intrigued of what they can do. I am a little skeptical of it not being approaching upon artists like, that are doing it. Because it, it pulls from artwork, so it's like, is it really, um, is it plagiarism? Is it, you know, are you stealing? Are you not getting credit? So I'm like, I'm, that's why I'm not really a fan of it, specifically. <laughs> oh, the traffic boxes? Is that, uh, yeah, my, oh, there's more. Say it again? Oh yeah, so the, yeah, the one with the hijab and the copy. What's the story behind it? So, okay, so I was like, so I have, I have traffic boxes in the area, uh, plenty of um, DC and a lot of in Hyattsville. Asking me about, I did a one, it's called Nakabi. Um, it's an ode to Muslim woman, so I am not Muslim, but I grew up in a Muslim home and I would notice how women were treated, or like, and not say at home, so in Muslim spaces. And I, you know, I am a proponent of like, genders, like non-conformation, non non-conformity, gender norms and things of the future. So I'm not really men separating the women, this, that, and third. So it was my own to women, Muslim women, and kind of giving English. Giving them the honor that they deserve. But the interesting thing is, you know, from a Western perspective, I'm like, oh, they're covering their faces and they have to be, you know, uh, private instead of third. But some of them believe, like, based on their culture, they love that they're in these things. So I'm like, okay, it's interesting having that dichotomy and understanding how they perceive something versus how you perceive something. So um, the human experience is very fascinating for me in my artwork and just my practice in general. Anyone else? All right. We'll take the microphone off. No. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my legs. <laughs> we made you sit down for a long time. Yeah. You're watching Pedal Reverie, from trauma to beauty, a solo art exhibition with Rashad Ali Muhammad. Stay tuned.
See the collection in person at the Art League, located in the landmark Torpedo Factory Art Center on the beautiful Potomac River in historic Old Town, Alexandria, Virginia. You're watching Pedal Reverie, From Trauma to Beauty, a solo art exhibition with Rashad Ali Muhammad. Stay tuned. Industries at the Torpedo Factory Arts Center in Alexandria, Virginia. You can get more content. Thank you for watching our live coverage of Pedal Reverie from Trauma to Beauty, a solo art exhibition. Industries at the Torpedo Time. Be well and live artfully. Thank you for watching our live. From Trauma to Beauty, a solo art exhibition and artist talk with Rashad Ali Muhammad on J.D. Hendustries at the Torpedo Factory Arts Center in Alexandria, Virginia. You can get more content by connecting social media platforms. Until next time, be well and live artfully. Thank you for watching our live coverage of Pedal Reverie from Trauma to Beauty, a solo art exhibition and artist talk with Rashad Ali Muhammad on JD Hendustries at the Torpedo Factory Arts Center in Alexandria, Virginia. You can get more content by connecting with the artist on all major social media platforms. Until next time, be well.